Get ready for Real Talk Radio. You're listening to the National Intel Report with your host, John Statmiller. Boy, being a talk show host for 15 years, you'd think I would have been a little bit more concise talking about the business cards. Folks, you get 100 of these things, generic cards, for 8 bucks, and that includes shipping. And we have gotten rid of at least 17, 18,000 of these. Now, these are going to be people that, you know, you can't wake everybody up, and not everybody is going to be accepting of the message, especially if they want to play ostrich and ignore all that that's going around them. I was talking to my producer here, Manimal, during the break, and I said, you know, I, I can scarcely believe what's going on. He says it's going on so rapidly. He said, all of what you guys have been talking about for all these years is happening in very quick succession. It's making my head spin, and I've been on top of this stuff for years. Amazing. It's simply amazing. Let's go to the phones. Dave in Canada. Hello, Dave. Hello, sir. How are you today? Uh, fair to Midland. Uh, all's not good in the USA. How are you doing up there in Canada? Well, all's not good in Canada. Just to touch a uh, comment about your health uh, remarks. In Ontario, they just revealed that there was $650 million uh, spent on this e-health, electronic health, in Ontario, and they can't figure out where the money's gone. The chairman's <laughs> resigned, and it's a big scandal. Uh-huh. So uh, stay away from social health care. We haven't even got doctors up in the rural area. Really? But I have a comment. Yes. I was talking to Robbie on Friday. Now, what is really scary up in Canada our illustrious uh, bank governor, Mark Carney, which was a Goldman Sachs and Hank Paulson buddy and an IMF buddy, and now he's appointed to our bank in Canada, turned around and announced on his interest rate policy uh, last Wednesday that they can't drop the interest rates, but they can flood our market with dollars, which scared the bejesus out of me. (laughs) Then all of a sudden Thursday... Uh, the Ottawa citizen, Robbie touched on it, said there's gold missing out of our mint. On Friday, they said, oh, no, there's gold, silver, and platinum missing out of our mint. But to make all us Canadians feel a whole lot warm and fuzzy, they said, don't worry, their bonuses are suspended until the investigation is over. Isn't that sweet? Now, I would like all your comments. Am I abs- I was led to believe... Um, three years back when I bought silver and gold through a lending institution in Canada that my certificates, that my position was held in their vault. I was just recently informed that no, my position is not held in their vault. That is only for commercial purposes. Um, I can order it and basically it's going to take seven weeks to get it. Um, I haven't slept since last week Mm -hmm. thinking that all my money is tied up in these precious metals. Mm -hmm. Am I ridiculous in turning around and extracting my position out of that lending institution and getting it personally in my pocket? Gentlemen? Well, that's what I do. Thank you. Robbie? Yeah, yeah well, you ain't going to get an argument from me on that one. And, Dave, you already, you already know my I position. I mean, that's the problem with pool accounts. I mean, pool accounts are what they are, pool accounts. And, 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 and obviously it brings up, uh, uh, I know, a contentious issue with Bob. Um, you know, when we look at the huge volumes we see in these gold, gold and silver ETFs, I mean, people are starting, especially when it comes to silver, because if you start doing the math with silver, they would need a, a warehouse the size of a football stadium to fit the amount of silver that uh, they say they have. It doesn't add up. No, it doesn't, none of it adds up. Uh, nothing adds up. Yeah, Dave, uh, the most is for the least is, and put it where you can put your hands on it uh, Im- immediately, if not sooner. Well, I already talked to Robbie on Friday with a bad cell phone, and Robbie... We are going ahead. I'm just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and I will be soon in touch with you. No problem. But I, I just wanted to make sure that our uh, my brothers and sisters up in Canada are listening. And, John, you've got a lot of listeners up here in Canada. And please, uh, my brothers and sisters down south, hey, bye, bye, bye. 
tuck it in your pocket because we don't know where the heck this is going. And, and Dave, as I've said before, once we liberate the United States, we're going to come up there and help you guys out. Hey, we, uh, we'll come down and liberate the U.S., and then we'll go back up and thank you. liberate ours. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Dave. Hey, thanks. Have a good evening. Thank thanks, you, gentlemen. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Don't we have wonderful people that listen to this program? I'm telling you. A lot of stuff going on in Canada not being reported in the U.S. Big conference taking place as we speak, the hot asset conference. A lot of interesting stuff coming out of there. Stephen in Montana. Hello, Steve. Hey, John. Um, uh, Robbie and Bob, I was just wondering if uh, I have some MS-62 numismatic coins, and they are in a plastic case with no numbering. I was wondering if it would be a good idea to try to get rid of one, of, get rid of those, and just go into some regular gold. Or Robbie, that's right up your alley. I know what you're going to say. No, <laughs> but, <laughs> no. but but then you got to understand. I'm 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 one of these people that only on very rare occasions would I ever recommend people swap metal for metal because what you're ultimately doing. Is you selling at wholesale, buying at retail? Um, not to say that uh, uh, people don't do it and uh, are successful in it, but uh, no, I, I, I'd simply hold on to them. I mean, Steve, what what are the coins worth uh, when they were appraised last? What were they worth? Well, that's what that's what I was wondering. Ah. Also, was that's what yeah. I was wondering. Also, was what they were worth? That's fifteen hundred. They're, they're not cased and they're not numbered. I just. Okay. They're in 1803, or 1903 and 1893, Okay, did you hear what, 1901. Did you hear what Robbie just said? If, if, if they are 62s, you're looking at around about $1,500. Now, the question you've got to ask yourself, because Robbie is correct, you sell those, you're going to have to sell it close to wholesale. And you're just going to have to figure out if you can flip those things, sell them, buy back in at current price, and make out on the deal. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You see, you'll most probably sell them for 1300 and then you've got to turn around and buy something for, you know, if it's one-ounce coins, you're paying over $1,000 for it. So, <clears throat> Well, they're, they're, they're $5 liberties. Oh, uh, $5 quarter liberties? Ounce. Yeah, I, and I got them for, like, two two fifty or two sixty. And yeah, I'd hold eight. on to yeah. them. Yeah, for, yeah. 62 $5 liberties are running around 500 bucks. Yeah. So since they're not in the case with numbering or, like, any special coin, how do you keep track of... Uh... Well, first of all, I mean, you do understand what an uncirculated coin looks like, right? Uncirculated. I'm pretty sure these are circulated. Oh, uh, if they circulated? Pretty yeah, sure. If they circulated, you're looking at about 300 bucks. Yeah. 